Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Today I have such a fun build for us. And actually, we're going to be building two structures today. So stick around. It's going to be fun. All right, today we're building an ice cream store. It is called the Cone Shack and it is from Foss Scale Models. Now, if you're new to the channel or new to the hobby, let me quick tell you about Foss Scale Models and the uh, Kid of the Month Club. You can join for six months or an entire year in every month you receive a kit in the mail. The instructions are so well done and the kits are so unique. Um, this one happens to be from June of 2020. I highly recommend joining this club. Um, it's incredible. Like I said, the kits are just so unique. Uh, they just add so much character to your layout or dioramas. All right, uh, we've got our instructions out, so let's go over those quick and we'll get our parts laid out and get started on this. Okay, I have all of my walls cut out. Um, I used a brand new blade. I think that's very important uh, to start every project with a brand new blade. I know when I first started in the hobby, uh, I would use the same blade for months months and uh it just it makes it so much easier and makes your cuts so much cleaner if you start with a brand new blade and i buy a hundred of these at a time off of amazon very cheap okay so now we're gonna take a file and go over the edges you can see there's a little little raised areas so you just quick go over those makes uh, for a nice clean fit when you assemble the model now we'll brace the walls and you can see on the instructions the orange is where the bracing goes and the bracing is provided in the kit it's a 1 8 inch thick squared now we're going to stain our walls. I have all my bracing glued on. And we're going to use murky brown. Now I'm using a wood stain from Best. Now I'm going to go over the walls again using shadow gray. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, if you want it a little darker, you could go over it again with the murky brown. And you just want to do a thin coat. You don't want to let it puddle. So go thin. You can always go over it again if you want it darker. I find it works best just to let these air dry. If you take um, a hair dryer and blow dry them, uh, they can sometimes warp. So it's best just to let it air dry. Uh, it takes it takes a while, but um, that's okay. While we let these dry, we can work on our other walls in the front. So let's get these cut out. Be very careful. Take your time when cutting these out. There's a lot of thin pieces on here and you don't want them to break. Okay, I cut all the pieces out. Now some of them are gonna get sprayed. So I'm just taking a piece of wood. I'm using painter's tape. I'm just gonna roll the ends. So the 
sticky side is up. And you just want to lightly put those on there. You don't want to press them. Just let it fall on there so they stick. If you press them down, uh, this is kind of sticky. And then when you peel them up, they may bend or break. Now, the this big piece for the front is going to get painted a separate color. So we're not going to spray that. And then same with these two. And we're also not going to paint this because that gets painted uh, a different color. That'll probably get painted. That's the counter. It'll probably get painted silver. So we're just going to spray these and it's going to be a reddish brown. Now we also want to take our trim. We want our corner trim to match. So we'll stick that on there too. All right, I'll quick spray these and then we'll come back and work on painting these. Okay, so I sprayed the pieces. Always go very light when you're spray painting um, anything for, really anything to do with modeling. Just do thin coats. I sprayed it with this. It's kind of a reddish brown. You can see how easy they come off. On these big pieces, before we paint them, I'm going to take a file and smooth the edges. Make sure there's no little bumps on it. Now be very careful that you don't bend them or break them. Okay. We'll hit this little one too, the counter. All right, now this is a little tricky. I want to paint those squares different colors. So what I'm going to do is, now that has to be centered on there. It's a little wider. The frame is a little bit wider than the big piece. I'm going to move it over just a hair. Lightly draw my lines. That way I'll know how to paint it or where to paint it. Ooh, be very careful. I just snapped that. It's okay. It'll get glued on there, but the bottom of it just snapped. So just be very careful when you're doing it. Okay, now these line up perfectly. Again, move it over just, just a hair. The thickness of the lead. I'll show you in a second what my pencil lines look like. Now you could glue the two together, then paint your colors then paint the trim i just didn't want to do it that way so here are the colors that i chose now i'm just putting on a thin coat this is going to actually take two or three coats for this color I don't know about the blue. For some reason, any paints that are close to looking like yellow uh, need multiple coats. I feel like yellow is a really hard color to paint with. I shouldn't say hard. It just takes um, some patience and, like I said, multiple coats. So we're doing every other square and we're doing the opposite pattern on the bottom. Again, go thin. Don't try to cover it all in one coat. You can always go over it again. Okay, we'll let this dry for a second and then I'll 
hit it with the second coat and then we'll move on to the blue okay so our color is all done now we can glue the two pieces together and don't be too concerned if um, it doesn't all line up and maybe your color goes outside not bad it's lining up pretty good we'll just take some glue and get these all glued together and then we can start to I think I'm going to use a white I'm going to use um, light buttermilk on our walls so we can do that next so I just wanted to show you quick how I'm gluing these on so I'm just you can see I'm just sort of dabbing it on there not going solid The little thin ones have hardly any glue at all on them, and that's okay. And I'm just kind of spreading the glue out. You want to make sure you don't get any glue on this piece. And remember, there's a little bit of space on each side. And the reason for that is that that fits in that space. I'm just taking a dry brush and wiping off any extra glue that's on there. Just cleaning it up. I want to show you, look at the bottom. The bottom, the paint doesn't line up perfectly. So don't be too concerned. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now we're going to use the uh, light buttermilk. Now you could sponge this if you wanted, or I'm going to show you. You can use a brush. Okay, our white is all done. I'll try to show you up close. Okay, now we'll set those aside and we're gonna go back to these. And we're gonna sponge silver on here and there to make it look like the that colored paint is chipping off and there's metal underneath it. Just picking at the sponge to give it a random shape. We don't have to worry too much about the center because there's big signs that go in there. Might be hard to see on camera. Okay, now before we assemble our walls, I'm going to take my file and go over the edges again. And I want to show you, you see the white on there? It can get kind of thick, and then when you put that trim up against it, it won't be a nice clean seam. So go over all of your edges. Uh, then we can start to put it together. Next, we're going to glue on our signs on the side. Make sure, Make sure you, you smear, smear the glue all the way edges. Perfect, perfect fit. Now we'll get our door. I think I want to do some weathering. Sponge on a sort of a, a wood color to make it look like the door is chipping. All right, well, here is the finished model. 
And you know, I watered down some burnt sienna and did a light wash over some of the blue. It was a little bright, so I just wanted to tone it down a little bit. Now, I wanted to sort of create a little story with the sign. So I figured at one time, the original sign was made of these big letters. And there were big letters under it that said check. Well, they rusted and started to fall off. So they then put this sign. So instead of tearing this whole thing down, they just sort of added to it and tied this to it. Um, with this sign. So it creates a little story for it. All right, well, I've got it placed on the layout and I can take the camera off and give you a closer look at where it's gonna go. All right, now let's travel into the future and build one for our sci-fi layout. So the Cone Shack in the future will not only sell ice cream, but it will also sell blue and green milk, just like at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. All right, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. And our Cone Shack is going to go all the way up on the top level. Okay, for the main structure, we're going to be using this styrofoam. So recently, my wife bought this breakfast sandwich maker. Uh, this thing basically makes um, egg McMuffin sandwiches. Well, I was super thrilled that she was buying it. And not for the sandwiches, <laughs> but I knew that it would have some really cool styrofoam in it. So, we're going to take this glue these end to end like that and this will be the front of the cone shack so the first thing we're going to want to do is take liquid nails and glue these together i might even take some pins and put in there to hold it to give it some strength i could put a wooden dowel through there Okay, while we let this dry, I picked up some letters at Hobby Lobby. Hmm, it's not a capital letter. I do have these, but they're quite a bit smaller. Right, let's, let's go with this. Because they're nice and thick. Okay, now I'm going to spray these with this off-white color. Okay, now we're going to paint this with a uh, gray paint that is water-based. So it's basically an acrylic paint, just like the craft paints. Same thing. Uh, I got this from Home Depot. Now I'm going to take a sponge and sponge on this tan color over it. I'm not going to do it solid. I'm going to leave it, I don't know, spongy looking <laughs> and maybe try to leave some gray on the edges like the paint's chipping. Now we're going to take our blue that we used on the um, HO scale cone shack and we're going to put blue on this. Uh, we're going to mask this because only the center, there's a stripe that gets blue on here. So, we're going to take some tape and mask it. Of 
Okay, the blue is done. After the blue was dry, I went and took the tan color and went over the edges. So I'm taking a small break from our structure and I'm going to start painting these. These go in the background behind the structure. So um, the background is very thin, uh, just like the building, because we really don't have much room up there. Um, so I'm trying to give the illusion that it's deeper than what it is. So I have these towers that go behind it. And I'm painting them lighter than what's in the foreground uh, to make it look like they're set back further. And we'll get some wires draped in between them. Um, but now I'm just going to uh, paint these. And I'm just using like a large Tylenol bottle, um, some type of lid. Um, here is a some type of drink container and then I have the uh, lid off of Pam cooking oil that'll get put on top of it now as far as gluing things together um, all of this is plastic but um, they don't always glue together well so what I do is I take baking soda and for instance here is a uh, lid off of a juice container i think it's orange juice and then there's a water bottle that i cut so um i'll take some sandpaper go over this go over that a little bit then i sprinkle the uh, baking soda on it and baking soda on this Put the super glue and it holds it really well um i don't know what it is about the baking soda but it makes the super glue work on uh, most anything really so um, baking soda is a good thing to get it to set up really quick super fast and hold strong I'm making the support for the roof and there's a big overhang just like on the HO scale one. So I first made my pattern out of styrofoam. Then I cut it out of cardboard and I put foam core in between to give it some thickness. And I just cut some, cut some holes just to give it some interest. Now, I'm going to put these on both sides. All right, well, here's where we're at so far. And as you can see, more tea light candles. So I had the, uh, these little holes on both sides. And so I built these cardboard boxes. And I'm going to put a, a straw. So that one goes there. And then this one gets two straws. Same thing. And it sort of fills that in. Now I'm going to use uh, liquid nails. 
to glue those in place. Okay, we'll have to do some painting to cover up that glue. There's a little gap on both sides. There was a little gap. And so I'm trying to fill that with the uh, glue. And then we'll just go back and paint it. It's kind of a pain to do it this way, but it's just how it was. I suppose I could have tried to cut it and make it level. In hindsight, that's what I should have done. <laughs> oh well. Here are the pipes, and then I even have this little detail here that we're going to glue right here. Okay, everything is glued in place. I even added a shoelace. <laughs> Oh, and I added a vent. Now we're going to add some dirt, especially along the bottom. Uh, this is City Dark Dust. And the other, the darker one is Farm Dark Earth. Next, we're making a sign, and I took some skewer sticks, and I took um, wire mesh or wire screen and wrapped it around the skewer sticks. Okay, so here is the sign finished. I might do some dry brushing or some rust streaks on the front of this just to give it a little interest. Next, I'm painting 32 toothpicks and I've already painted the other side. So I will spray a gray primer on it and then take bittersweet chocolate and paint them. So like I said, I did one side and then taped them down on new tape. Now I'll spray these and paint them and these will be done. Now you know why I picked these two colors, blue and green milk. Circles cut out of cardboard. <laughs> now I've got to 
spray a primer on these and put our bittersweet chocolate on them both sides now if anyone's wondering why i didn't use my airbrush on all this and the toothpicks i could have used styrofoam and stuck it in there and sprayed it well that gray is showing through so this gives it a texture I don't want it to have an even spray that you get from an airbrush. So this is a happy accident, but as I'm peeling these up, some of the acrylic paint wasn't quite dry in its peeling, which really adds to the texture and the rust. want to try to get it centered as close as possible okay our milk containers are done So as I'm filming this, I realized I didn't put any rust or dirt on the edge. So I'm going to have to go back and do that. Oh, wow, such an exciting build. Uh, both projects. Hard to believe. It all started with a very unique kit from Foscale Models. And then that inspired me to build one for the sci-fi layout. And then, <laughs> and then having my wife buy the uh, breakfast sandwich maker was perfect. Um, man, what a great project. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thanks to my patrons. Your support means a lot and really makes this channel possible. And if you'd like to support the channel, uh, please head over to patreon.com slash Jason Jensen Trains. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay motivated. And happy modeling, everyone.